In this video, we're going to formally describe what a matrix is, and then we'll show you how to add and scale matrices, as well as prove some properties about matrices. So here is a matrix. A matrix is basically a collection of column vectors. So for instance, the matrix A will have a column vector A1, A2, all the way up to AN, and this will be listed as rows and columns. So again, you remember before, any matrix is M by N, where M is the amount of rows and N is the amount of columns. So in this matrix here, A1 through AN, we have N columns and however many rows each entry has. So how do we list these entries? Well, the first one is going to be A11. This means the first row and the first column. The next entry to the right of it will be A12, meaning the first row, second column. And this will go all the way to the right until we hit A1n, meaning the first entry in the nth column. So if we go to the next row, then we'll index it as A21, which means the second row, first entry. Then we have A22, second row, second entry, all the way up to A2n, meaning the second row, the n nth, nth entry. And similarly, if we go down the left side, we go all the way down to the mth row. So we have AM1, so mth row first entry, AM2, and that goes all the way over to AMN, meaning the mth entry on, or the mth row nth entry. Mth and nth are very hard to say over and over again, but this picture is standard notation, and you'll use this for every matrix ever. This is convention, so please learn this and memorize that it's rows then columns. If you do columns and rows, I know you're thinking of graphs when you talk about column first then row, but that is incredibly confusing and you don't want to mix your notation up on an exam because that would be very terrible. Okay, so adding matrices. If two matrices are the same size, then you can add them together. So if A is M by N and B is M by N, then A plus B will be the same size. So for instance, A plus B, well, what is A? A is a two by three matrix and B is a two by three matrix. So our result will be two by three. So how do we add them together? Well, we take the corresponding entries and we add them. So for instance, A, this is A11 and this zero is B11. So for the one one position, we take A11 plus B11. So this would be one plus zero. For the second entry, here's A12, and this would be B12. We just add A12 and B12 together. So we're gonna get two plus one for our second entry, and we'll keep going. So the first row third entry will be six plus two. Now on the second row, the first entry will be negative one plus six. The second one will be zero minus two, and the third one will be three minus six. So then our result is going to be, well, one plus zero is one, two plus one is three, six plus two is eight, negative one plus six is five, negative two, and negative three. So this is just like adding vectors together, except we're doing multiple vectors. So B plus C, can we do this? Well, B is a two by three matrix, and C is a two by two matrix, therefore this is not possible. And let's think about why it's not possible. So it's not possible because these entries here, this two and this negative six, there's nothing to add to them. And it's not like you can add zero and say, oh, there's nothing to add, so we add zero. It's that there's literally, you're adding the empty set to it. And we can't just do that. We can't do that with matrices. So if they're not the same size, you can't add them. Multiplication, it's different, but we'll get to that when we hit multiplication. So how do we scale them? Well, we have a bunch of vectors in our matrix and we scale it by some number C. So we just distribute that number C throughout all of the vectors, just like vector multiplication. So A is uh, three, two, six, negative one. I will split these up a little bit more so we can see them more distinctly. So this is our matrix. So we have four times A. Well, this is just four times three, two, six, negative one. And now we just distribute. So this is the matrix four times three, 
4 times 2, 4 times 6, and 4 times negative 1. And this comes out to 12, 8, 24, and negative 4. So that's scaling. So adding and scaling, pretty straightforward. So here's the bulk of the information here. And these are our proofs, these are our properties. If A, B, and C are m by n matrices, and we have two scalars R and S, then A and B is the same as B plus A. A plus B plus C, if we do A and B first, it's the same as doing B plus C first and then adding A. If we add the zero matrix to A, we get A back. And uh, the zero matrix is essentially a matrix where every entry is zero. So all of these are zeros, and that is the zero matrix. So when I have a matrix here and I say I'm adding zero, I'm really referring to this matrix right here. Uh, if I take a constant and I multiply it by matrices A plus B, then I can distribute the scalar. If I have two scalars, once again the distribution rule applies, so we can get RA plus SA. And if we take two scalars and multiply by a matrix, then we can multiply the scalars first and then multiply by the matrix. So these are our six properties. We'll prove two and I challenge you to prove the rest. Uh, they all follow the same little tip. So we want A plus B to equal B plus A. Well, how do we do this? Um, so we know that these matrices are actually just a bunch of column vectors. So we have a has A1, A2, all the way up to An, and B has B1, B2, all the way up to Bn. So fortunately, what have we done? Well, we've proven that if we have uh, two vectors, A plus B, this is equal to the same vector as B plus A. So we should use this. So we're going to use our vector proofs to shorten this up really quickly. So, for each little matrix here, A and B, we can take one column vector. So we can say, okay, well let's take vectors AJ plus vector BJ. And using our matrix or our vector properties up here, we know that this is the same thing as the vector BJ plus the vector aj. So because this holds for every single vector in our two matrices, that means we can switch the order we add them in for every single vector, which means that this a plus b is equal to b plus a. So this is for all j, uh, where j is between 1 and n. So this is pretty much fully written out, uh, use more words obviously, but the general idea is here. So you can use this trick for every single proof in this list. Uh, so we'll do a distributive one with scalars since, you know, scalars and vectors are a little bit different. So we'll do a scalar and matrix mix. So we have R plus S times A is equal to R times A plus S times A. So again, we have that A is equal to a bunch of column vectors. That is what the matrix is composed of. So for each j, so let's take some vector in this list, aj, and we're going to multiply r plus s by this vector aj. And we know, because we've already proven this using vectors, that this is equal to r times aj plus s times aj. And this is going to be for all of these column vectors in there, so between uh, 1 and n. So because of this, we know this is just going to end up as Ra plus Sa. Because this is true for any of the column vectors there. In fact, it's actually true for all of them. So because all of them follow this method, we can break it up into two matrices. So this R plus S times A is the same thing as RA plus SA. Of course, um, really, you just add R and S together and make one number, but that wouldn't be fun now, would it? So 
That is adding and scaling matrices. Next time we'll talk about multiplying matrices, which is much more challenging, uh, but hopefully this helped. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them as quick as I possibly can.